43 million people across America had no health insurance in 2003. I think the entire country is feeling this health care crisis. We estimate that there are one-fourth of the population, 25 percent of the population of Los Angeles County is uninsured, meaning they have absolutely no form of funding. In many cases, the last resort for health care for these people is the urban emergency room. What happens is patients wait in emergency rooms, there's a backup in emergency rooms, there's difficulty getting these specialists to come in, and I believe people are suffering. And I believe people are dying because of the weights that they have to have in an emergency room. With the costs of health care insurance out of reach for millions of otherwise average Americans, health care is moving away from primary care doctors and directly to the nation's emergency rooms. We're seeing sicker and sicker patients in the emergency department because they don't have access to health care. They can't afford their medications. They can't afford the copay to go see their doctor. The crisis is compounded by rising health services costs and insurance premiums that have forced more and more employers to drop coverage for their workers. And now the cost of insurance is forcing even more individuals to cancel their own existing insurance policies. This is the biggest single cause for personal bankruptcy in this country, is an unpaid large medical bill. And all it takes is everybody is one significant trauma or serious illness away from basically having all of their resources wiped out. And that's exactly what happened to Terry Lehman. He had a well-paying job in hospital finance for many years, until his health took a drastic change for the worse. The point is, is that I'm a severe diabetic. I've had it for like 38 years. And um, I got very sick. I lost my job. I had to declare bankruptcy because of that. I cannot get a job back in the field where I was. And so now I'm without insurance. People are no longer able to afford it. Some of them are having to drop their health insurance. And so now they are working, and even though their insurer is providing insurance, they can't afford the premiums. They just can't afford that increased premium. California has been particularly hard hit by this health care crisis. A steady influx of immigrants into the state, coupled with a ballooning urban population, have forced hospitals to provide $5.1 billion in uncompensated care in 2003 most of that going to treat the uninsured or underinsured. We're losing over $10 million to keep our emergency department e open each and every year. But our resources are stretched to, if not beyond, the breaking point already. If we don't have a remedy for that soon, and the remedy for that is funding, uh, we will be far beyond the breaking point. There will be deaths that should have been avoidable. Uh, and weren't because of lack of resources. And uh, then somebody will try to look for somebody to blame. Under serious financial strain, 10 California hospitals closed in 2004, nine of those in Los Angeles. So there's a potential domino effect. If a safety net hospital closes in a large city, immediately there's a huge influx of indigent patients with no ability to pay to the private hospitals who can no longer make a profit, and those who are on the margin will close, and soon even insured patients will have difficulty finding a hospital bed when they need it, because all the hospital beds will be full. Rich or poor, citizen or immigrant, overcrowded ERs and hospitals will eventually affect everyone. Well, the emergency department is the great equalizer. If there's no bed available, it doesn't matter whether you have insurance or non-insurance, there's no place to take care of you. It's a disaster. And it is a disaster, and people are dying because of this. Healthcare professionals and lawmakers have grappled with spending and funding mechanisms for years with no easy solution in sight. But they do think they know the source of the problem. The fact that these insurance companies are enormously profitable is really the problem. 
I don't believe anyone should be making profit off of health care. I think all the money should go into health care. The free market is a joke. It is, it's an abomination. It simply doesn't work. 31% of our health care dollar doesn't go to health care. It goes for administrative overhead and profit. Pharmaceutical companies, insurance companies. Many legislators I've spoken to feel that until we see people dying in the streets, they don't really feel that we have enough of a crisis to make a difference. Um, let me just tell you that people are dying. They're actually dying before they get to our emergency departments and actually in our waiting rooms. It goes back to your philosophy. Do you believe that um, health is a human right? It goes back to a very fundamental principle and that you have to answer. And I happen to believe it is. In recent years, broad economic and demographic changes have had a profound effect on the business and profession of healthcare in America. Americans have heard the stories for years. Medical care and insurance costs rise. Fewer employers offer insurance. Medicare and Medicaid funding are threatened. As a result, each year an increasing number of Americans are unable to provide basic health care services for themselves and for their families. Large numbers of our patients really come here with virtually no social support. They have virtually no economic resources and many of our patients actually either who do work are uninsured. And so that their long-term health care maintenance is, is none, zero. Jennifer yes. Sutton? Hi. Hi. The problem is nationwide. No state or region is immune. From coast to coast, the situation is much the same. Say, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, has it got your tongue for me? Jennifer Sutton just moved to Denver from Kansas. She suffers from a chronic sinus infection. And without a family doctor, she came to a walk-in clinic seeking relief. I start a new job tomorrow, and I have a 90-day waiting period for health insurance. And so um, I'm not able to... I don't have any health insurance until that period is, is passed. Jennifer is among the few but fortunate people who can afford care, but on this day she has yet to learn the cost. I don't have any idea at this point. Um, I did pay, you know, a, a deposit when I came in, but... Um, of how much? Sixty dollars, which is not too bad, I don't think, in terms of a, a visit. So, um, no, I don't really have any idea how much this is going to cost me, but I'm going to have to pay for it, so... <laughs> Others are not so lucky. Last year, Alfredo Graciano broke his ankle crossing a busy street. He went to a private hospital's emergency room where his fracture was set. But as he was uninsured, the ongoing care he needed was denied. They referred him instead to Denver Health Medical Center, Colorado's largest public safety net hospital. Pero, uh, por ejemplo, el año pasado yo tuve un accidente, me quebré el tobillo. With no insurance at the time, Alfredo was billed at the full rate, about $10,000. These folks have no insurance. They present to an emergency department and they get a bill. And it's a large bill. Ayer te sentía más malo. So yesterday he felt pretty bad. He's visiting from Mexico and he got sick. No ability to pay and a potentially serious illness. His diagnostic procedures, including this echocardiogram, quickly ran into thousands of dollars. Let me just say, though, that I think it's important that we do the right test. And uh, if we feel like a test that's expensive is the right test, then we'll do that. And we'll do our best to do that regardless of the patient's ability to pay. Like millions of others who are uninsured with nowhere else to turn, the quick answer to health care is through the doors of the emergency room. Many of them are the working poor, those people who are not offered insurance through their employer, or those people who truly cannot afford to pay for an insurance policy. Since 1986, hospitals in the United States with a licensed emergency room are required to assess and stabilize every patient that comes through the door. It's a federal law. It's called the Emergency Medical Transfer and Labor Act. And it's a good law because it says that everybody has to be treated, that everybody has the ability to have health care. The problem is that with so many people without insurance, emergency rooms are where they're seeking that health care. And the emergency room has to treat the patient regardless. 
16 is an 87 year old male who actually has been complaining of weakness and feeling dizzy like the world. The rising cost of care for the uninsured and underinsured has led to serious logistical and financial problems for many of America's hospitals and doctors. So they're going to come one way or the other. And so we can't really control the ingress. And then in order to free up our beds in the ED to see patients and turn them over and get people in and out, we have to get admitted patients upstairs. And the problem in most places is the inpatient beds are full. What do you got? 28 year old, 20, 28 year old female, eutocaria developed about 5.36. Okay, hey, morning. let me put this one in. So yours is an allergic reaction from the clinic? This day, Denver Health's ER was on advisory status with only one or two ICU beds left. If those spaces filled up, that backlog would create a domino effect that could seriously affect patient care. Then ICU patients that are critical may linger down here for quite a while. Sometimes, you know, we've had people down here for 24 hours. That's not unusual in really busy hospitals during a really busy time when ICUs fill up and then patients have to be managed out in the emergency department, which is not an optimal place by any means to take care of patients who are critical for prolonged periods of time. Since the uninsured can't afford to see a primary care doctor at a clinic, they'll often delay an ER visit until they're very ill. And those sicker patients are more difficult and more expensive to treat every step of the way. My patient load is far more difficult than I've ever faced. Um, every year it seems to be getting worse. Um, there's just this evidence in my emergency department we, uh, I see less than 2% of my patients are straightforward or limited exam patients. Almost every patient I see now demands a full workup. Problems like these are increasingly common across the country, with more populous states like Texas, Florida, and New York hit harder than others. When World Report continues, many of the same circumstances are pushing the healthcare system in California dangerously close to the brink.